Hi there everyone. Hope you are doing well. My name is Devansh and I'm here today to present the management or the gateway case study exam pre-scene analysis to you. As you know, this pre-scene is going to be used over two windows, which means for the November exam and for the February exam, the pre-scene is going to be remaining the same. So this analysis will aid you for the next six months or so over two exam windows. And if you go through it carefully, you have a very good chance of understanding the company and then using that knowledge to write, I'll say, very good and well-informed mock answers. So throughout the pre-scene, what we'll do is we'll try to relate it to our E2, P2 and F2 syllabus at every stage so that you get important learning areas and you are gathering a whole lot of information about your company from the strategic point of view as well. So this pre-scene that is curated by us is something that we really spend time upon. It's a big time commitment from our end and you'll see that effort once you start going through the pre-scene with us. The pre-scene that we have is divided into three parts. Today I'm going to present the first part to you which is introducing the company. The second part is going into more details about the company, you know, the strategies, the production process of the company. And the third part will be the financial analysis, which means we will very deeply analyze the statement of profit or loss, the statement of financial position, the segment analysis of our company, and try to get an understanding of the base or the core of our company. The entire pre-scene is about two and a half hours long. So we cover every single thing in detail, not missing out anything and giving you the best chance of understanding the company while we relate each and every part of the pre-scene to our E2, P2 and F2 syllabus. Before I start with this pre-scene analysis for you, I want to introduce you to the industry analysis. Now the industry analysis is a completely different and a new document that we create for our students. It's something extra that we want to give our students because we like you to have good background knowledge of the industry before you start with the pre-scene. So when you start with the pre-scene, you already have good pointers and good areas and good points in your mind which you can relate better and eventually understand the company better. This industry analysis is part of our free mini course. So along with this pre-scene, I'm going to put a link in the description below that's going to have or that's going to take you directly to our free mini course. Now the free mini course includes the industry analysis like I mentioned. It includes a personalized study plan for you guys. It includes some very important e-pillar revision pillar revision and it also has explanations about the SEMA exam blueprint or the ICANN statements. Also it gives you a free mock exam to try out. So the mini course is created again with a lot of time and with a lot of effort and it will definitely give you a very good start and a very good you know direction to follow for your management case study exam. And guess what? It's absolutely free. So you got to try it now. While you try the mini course, I'll start with this pre-scene analysis and I'll take you through the next steps. So first, I will ask everybody to take this opportunity, register for the mini course. It's absolutely free. And then side by side, you can begin this pre-scene with me. So this pre-scene analysis, like I mentioned, will take you through the first part of the pre-scene that is introducing the company Frinta. So Frinta is the fictional company that they have given us this time around for our exam. So without further ado, let me start with the pre-scene analysis. The first section that we come to is the introductory section. So they firstly tell us that Frinta is a quoted company that manufactures controls for central heating systems and electronic devices that form the basis for smart homes. Now, if we ever look at a smart home, one of the basic features will be that there is one single control area that looks at the entire heating system, that looks at the entire cooling system. Those controls 
are what my company manufactures. So it's an essential element of a smart home. In our industry analysis, we discussed that the overall big market that we are part of is the smart homes market. And under the smart homes market, we specifically focus on manufacturing controls only. We are a control manufacturer. I want you to keep this in mind. And that is why I have always recommended everybody to first do our industry analysis and then come here to the pre-scene analysis. So you have better knowledge and you can link stuff better. Just to give you a little bit more background here. Frinta is a quoted company is what they're telling us. So quoted reminds me or tells me that it's listed on the stock exchange. Now, just to make a quick analysis, there are advantages and disadvantages of being a listed company. Advantages are very clear. You have enhanced visibility listed on the stock exchange. Everybody knows the price of the share. So you have better transparency. There's better liquidity and access to capital for growth. You can raise capital if needed. Disadvantages are once you become a listed company, there is a long list of reporting requirements, government scrutinies that take place. And if you don't meet them, then there are liabilities and penalties that are a possibility. So what I did was word by word, we will analyze the pre-scene in this way. And every time we find a trigger word, which we find important to just give you some more explanation on, we'll create a text box like you can see on your screen and we'll provide some extra information. And also we will link it back to E2, P2 and F2 at every stage. So the, the process of being a quoted company, long-term finance, this is part of your F2 syllabus. And because I'm talking about us being a quoted company, topics like earnings per share or, you know, bonus issues, rights issues, all of this come into the picture and can become a realistic exam scenario. And that is why your IAS 33, which is part of your F2 syllabus, is also a topic that we must have some knowledge upon. So at every stage, relating topics or topics which are directly picking up from the pre-scene, we'll point those out for you. So you have important syllabus areas that you are focusing upon while we do the pre-scene together. Also, on the top left-hand side of the screen, you're seeing the Frinta logo. I just want you to get yourself accustomed to the logo. Because if you just look at the logo by itself, you'll see that it kind of represents the smart home theme. Let's move on. Frinta is based in Westland, a developed country that has a strong economy and whose citizens have a high standard of living. Again, in the industry analysis, we did analyze that, you know, countries that have strong economies high standards of living, have already experienced good growth and have already experienced a strong market share in this industry because they have been embracing the smart homes technology from a very long time. So this clearly tells me that the demand conditions of the country that I'm currently based in are going to be strong. So Westland being a highly developed economy means the people of Westland will have the interest and disposable income to spend on innovative products like ours, which is the smart home controllers or the temperature controllers that we create. So this is a good thing. This is a comparative advantage for my company. And this is straight out of your E2 syllabus that I'm stating this model. So again, whenever we find something important, we'll give you knowledge about it directly from your syllabus. So you don't have to look here, there and everywhere. So a comparative advantage to keep in mind that the market that I'm currently based in, situated in is a strong market, which has good demand conditions and people have a high standard of living. So they'll, they'll have the money to spend on the innovative products that you are introducing as a company. Next, they tell us that the currency of Westland is W dollars. 
so whenever you are writing something in the exam quoting something in the exam just don't write dollars write w dollars because that's the currency it's a fictional company in a fictional country and we must stay true to the theme and that is why a small you know just an insight will be to stick to the currency that they have provided west indian company law requires companies to prepare their financial statements in accordance to the ifrs so there could be a realistic exam scenario where they ask you you know how will consolidation work how will associate accounting work joint accounting work all of that is knowledge that is part of our f2 syllabus and that can be a very realistic scenario going on in the pre scene they might tell you that you know we've acquired another company we are going for a joint agreement how will we record this this is part of your f2 syllabus so these are realistic scenarios that can come up and we are pointing them out from for you so you can just have a piece of paper or a notepad right beside where you are taking a note of this you can pause the video here take a note of the scenarios that i have mentioned and then keep moving on so you are a finance manager at frinters head office they've given you the role of a finance manager so what is the role of a finance manager a finance manager generally looks at medium term decisions he looks at risk management he looks at long term financing advanced financial reporting advising the top management and considering stakeholders when we make important decisions so if you look at all of these above points you'll see that these straight away relate to your e2 p2 and f2 syllabus all of these are part of your e2 p2 and f2 syllabus and that is what the exam is about an amalgamation of the learnings that you get from e2 p2 and f2 combined with the pre scene knowledge and then writing an informative answer so it's three pillars to do well on this exam you need to have good knowledge good pre scene knowledge and should be able to write informative answers so right now i'm just trying to tell you that the role of a finance manager generally covers aspects of e2 p2 and f2 and once we move to our blueprint and i can statement explanations you will see that pretty much everything is covered in there after this they are also telling us that our primary responsibilities are associated with management accounting and you report to amadou galo the senior financial manager who reports to the finance director so you are the manager you report into the senior finance manager and then he reports into the finance director but your primary responsibilities are going to be associated with management accounting so again the hint of the p2 syllabus being very important for the management case study has been given here we already know that p2 is the most important pillar for this exam on the next page they have given us frinter's history so if you look at the elaborate history of frinta you'll see that we were established in 1970s initially manufacturing components such as thermostats so earlier we were a component manufacturer slowly we now turned into a control manufacturer so we manufactured actual components at that time now we are only manufacturing controllers or controls so initially manufacturing components such as thermostats to control domestic central heating systems first and foremost we have already been in the market for about 50 years half a century now have you seen any company in the whole wide world that has existed for 50 years but doesn't have good products doesn't have a brand image doesn't have people who prefer their products it's absolutely impossible so for frinta one of the major advantages is that we will have garnered some goodwill and good resistance ability that we have been able to thrive for such a long period of time and in these 50 years every market goes through stages of booms stages of recessions if we have survived this peak period and 
if we have survived, you know, rock bottom as well or recession periods, it says a lot about the company that we have good resistance ability. So this is your competitive advantage. Whenever you are writing something as part of the mock exams, if you are to simply state your or, you know, just writing anything where you can start your answer by saying, because we have an elaborate history of being in the market for 50 years, we have good uh, brand awareness, we have good customer loyalty, and then just go on to write whatever the task is. But by including parts of the pre-scene this way in your answer, you're making your answer more informative and more related to the pre-scene. And that is what this whole exam is about. That is why we are doing this pre-scene analysis to give you good ideas and great ideas that you can eventually use when you are writing mock exams with us. Frinta's founder was a plumber who had developed and patented a new type of thermostat that was easier to install and that gave users greater control over their home central heating than traditional controls. So in that time, he developed a new technology and he had patented it. Now, when I speak about patents, when I speak about, you know, any kind of copyright, trademark, patents, it directly links to my intangible assets IAS, which is from my F2 syllabus. So again, another syllabus area that you must keep in mind because going forward, an exam scenario can very realistically be that, okay, we've developed a new type of controller which has been patented. How do we account for it? Or how will this intangible asset be accounted for? It's only a design at this stage. Or, you know, you've come up with a new app. How will that be accounted for? Intangible assets is an important IAS for us to keep in mind. So this first and foremost showcases the innovative nature of the business from the very beginning, which means from the very beginning, the business was always innovating, looking at new methods. That's a good thing because you need to stay ahead of your competition. The company started to manufacture these devices at a time when there was a significant boom in the construction industry with new homes being built with central heating throughout and many older homes being modernized, which means it was a change in the market. This change was identified and our product and our company eventually became popular. So this showcases our innovative nature and market awareness from the very inception of the business. Next page, we have Frinter's products now. So what are our products? The first product is heating controls. So Frinter's early products were essentially mechanical devices that controlled gas powered central heating systems. Most homes had a single main thermostat that controlled the central heating system. A rotary dial, the image of which you can see on the left hand side, set the temperature at which the house was to be maintained. So this was one of our initial products. When the air temperature was above the threshold, a simple mechanical device opened a switch inside the device and so disconnected the electrical connection to the central heating boiler. For example, if you set the room temperature at 24 degrees, if it goes below 24 degrees, then the heating system will automatically heat the house. If it goes above 24 degrees, then this simple mechanical device opens the switch, electrical connection disconnected and heating stops till the temperature becomes 24 again. So this is the technical side of the product that they're giving you. When the air cooled, the thermostat closed the switch and activated the heating system like I just explained. On the right hand side now, individual radiators also had mechanical thermostats that controlled the flow of hot water that was piped from the boiler. On the right hand side, you'll see an image, the thermostat and an individual radiator is put on it. So if you only wanted to control one single thermostat, you could do that. So if a radiator was below its desired temperature, then its thermostat opened a valve that allowed hot water to flow through. So there was this entire heating system that we had 
image on the left hand side and then there were individual radiators as well which could control the temperature image on the right hand side the thermostat closed the valve once the radiator reached its desired temperature and so there was no overheating over here what's happening is majorly giving you an idea of the technical side of the product how were these products used and for us to do well we will always have to be developing new products so technical and mechanical knowledge will be key for our industry so when we go deeper into the pre scene and when we start analyzing what the directors of this company are who the directors are what their core competencies are we'll try to see do we have someone who is an expert in development who has technical background because that will be very important for our company so something for us to keep in mind for now on the next page they are telling me that frinta expanded its range to operate electric heating systems as well using similar mechanical thermostats to those in its controls for gas powered heating so first we had controls only or controllers only for gas powered heating systems we then saw that people were expanding and people needed the electric heating systems as well so we started making controls for electric heating systems as well so the company accepts product diversifications which is very important in today's world earlier we were dealing only in one product segment we saw the growth we jumped into another product segment which is important and flexibility is key for this modern business environment now all of its products were designed to be as attractive as possible because they were intended for home use and also as easy to operate as possible now this line clearly tells me the culture of my organization so the core areas of focus are going to be to design attractive products to uh, to design products which are used in homes and to design products which are easy to operate so now whenever you are doing any mock exam or whenever you are suggesting something whenever you have ideas in your mind remember that the core values of any new product that you bring in have to be attractive have to be used in homes and have to be easy to operate these are our core values we must stay true to the same because a business only goes on for 50 years if they deliver quality if they stay true to its values so these are our core values the company rapidly became the largest supplier of domestic heating controls in westland so being a market leader is our comparative advantage we are the largest supplier if anybody wants domestic heating controls then we are the ones that they will go to frinta invested heavily in product design so we have invested in product design we added features such as mechanical timers that permitted householders to set their heating to switch on and off at predetermined times so this was a new innovation that we added a new user interface was a key element of any new design with each new device being designed to be as easy to use as possible so whenever we added something new it was innovative and it was easy to use so my core competency or my focus has to be on innovating new products which are easy to use for household customers Frinta was quoted on the Westland Stock Exchange in the early 1990s which means the business started in 7, 1970s got listed in 1990s so approximately 20 years after being founded we were a large enough company to be listed on the stock exchange at the time the founder stepped down from the company and retired he sold his shares and took no further interest in the company which means this person has no interest in the company now it is being led by competent board of directors from the 1990s up until now which is roughly you know 30 years where they have been able to make the company more successful because that is why it's existing right since its flotation frinta has continued to manufacture control devices that's our major business 
Its range now includes controllers for hot water heaters and air conditioning systems. So we have expanded fully into this segment. We were earlier only looking at hot water heaters or thermostat controls. Then we came into electric controls. Now we are making controls for air conditioning systems as well. Frinter has been at the forefront of incorporating new technologies into its designs. So my comparative advantage is that I've always been innovative. My business is always innovative. For example, replacing mechanical thermostats with electronic sensors and incorporating LCD displays that show settings and have made controllers more reliable and even more easier to operate. So we are staying true to the original nature and the culture of the company, which is to make the experience easy with state-of-the-art design. One major area of change has been online control. Most of Frinchas devices are now smart, meaning they can connect to the householder's home Wi-Fi system and can be operated by an app downloaded to a smartphone, tablet, laptop or desktop computer. So you can see the smart features are now built into our products and hence we form the base for a smart home. As we have read in our industry analysis, the smart homes market as a whole is growing and most of the growth is consolidated in the APAC region, Asia Pacific. So as we move deeper into the pre-scene, we'll see where does Frinta operate, which markets Frinta sells to. We'll be able to relate it better because we've done our industry analysis. Along with our innovation credentials, looking at growing markets should be an active investment for us. We have such a good brand name, so why not use it to expand and increase our presence? So as we look at market diversification strategies, it's important to always keep an eye out for markets where growth is possible. Also, in my industry analysis, I have mentioned that major players in this market, like any, any major player in this market, for example, Johnson Controls, Snyder or Nest, they have expanded into markets by either acquisitions, by either mergers, by either joint ventures. Now, acquisitions, joint ventures, clearly part of your F2 syllabus and your consolidated accounting part. So this is being, again, brought into your syllabus here. As you can see, I am noting down important syllabus areas. It will be important for you to just pause the video here write down these syllabus areas that I'm mentioning. They're, they're on your screen, yes. But to make a separate note for yourself, which you can quickly refer to, can be invaluable. Moving on, users can operate their heating systems from any room in the house, making use of the user-friendly interface in the app to make any adjustments with ease. They can also control their devices from outside the house provided they have an internet connection. Frinter's app makes it easier for householders to program their heating systems to suit their lifestyles. So app management is going to be key in this modern business environment. And it's good that we have an app because it will add to our competitive advantage. And having an app in today's modern world means you have so much data you have so much personal data, you have so much activity that is, you know, tapped in your app, which you can really use for data analytics, data management and serve your customers better. I'll be showing you an example of this as we move deeper into the pre-scene, but just know the topics of data analysis, big data, data management are key for us mainly because we have the opportunity as we have an infrastructure set up like an app. And also when we are speaking about app management or app delivery or, you know, just keeping on upgrading our apps, it is important to just have a brief knowledge about digital product management, app management, cost of developing an app, maintaining an app. And this is something that is part of actually your P1 syllabus. 
so everybody who's studying with us i will give you an extra summarized document just on digital product management it will give you a little bit more of background information that's all coming back to where we left off the heating system can be programmed to switch itself off at times when the house is likely to be unoccupied the householder can also override the timer from a smartphone or any connected device so as you can see there are a whole lot of features which are available in our products which is important in today's world so up until now we were only speaking about big data as an opportunity how can it really be an opportunity for us in our market is what we are now presenting to you so this is supplementary reading or extra reading that we have generated for our students so this is a study on big data and its opportunities in the real market so what other big component and controller manufacturers are doing in the real world how are they using big data for their benefit that's what we have tried to analyze over here so big competitors today are using big data to improve their future design by understanding what the customer wants they are using big data to anticipate future repair and replacement costs replacement needs they are using big data to increase their service productivity to better serve the customers and with the help of big data they are generating good relationships with their customers by interaction by providing them answers and that is just developing a want for their product a demand for their product there are major drivers for big data in this modern world and major drivers of big data which are leading to more and more adaption of smart homes now we are a part of the smart homes market because we manufacture controllers so controller manufacturers are really facing a whole lot of advantage because of the use of big data first and foremost because people are understanding the importance of home heating and ventilation understanding the health benefits of the same so if a company like ours doesn't use big data and can't give the customers you know intuitive feedback good feedback then they might look for a competitor brand so there are drivers for big data which controller manufacturers are really taking on board most homeowners now are becoming involved in their sustainability initiatives big data and analytics can help customers save energy because if your app if your uh, you know your product tells the customers what temperature to set that saves them the electric bill what temperatures to set so that it's a good healthy environment you can only do that if your product has big data capabilities and you're using them so big data is something that is now really being used so so far we saw that big data is really being used in our industry and how it's being used we also discussed that but there are its own challenges as well big data and analytics is quite matured in certain industries but in this specific industry it's something that's still new it's something that still is coming up so not many people know about it and not many people are able to use it other than the big well established companies organization of building big data systems building the entire infrastructure is a really tedious and time consuming effort companies are also exploring effective solutions to store and manage that huge volume of data because you are collecting it but how to then use it how to then store it securely so big data comes with its benefits but it has challenges as well to put it in perspective almost all the large equipment manufacturers and service companies or the ones that make components sensors and controllers majorly johnson honeywell carrier train schneider siemens these companies are really using big data they've start, now started to harness its full potential so the final thoughts on this is that one of the greatest strengths of market leaders has always been that they don't wait for competitors you are a big company your company frinter is in the market for 50 years it's been in the market for a long time 
so you are a big company rather than waiting for someone why not take the initiative and try to look at the possibility of using big data it has so many advantages some of the market leaders efforts have sometimes paid off because it gives you unparalleled advantage so why did i give you this supplementary reading point of all of this is that my company can do the same my company can harness the potential of big data we are a big company manufacturing controllers and have been in the industry for a very long time so something like this can be a huge opportunity for us and this gave you lots of food for thought lots of gave you uh, you know pointers to keep in mind so whenever there is a big data spectrum or a question or a part that is being assessed you have good knowledge from the real world which you can quote and it will really add integration marks to your answer as well moving to the next page we go back to the pre scene now we were discussing the pre scene then we went to some supplementary reading that we gave you we are back to the pre scene now so frinter remains westland's leading supplier for controllers by revenue so you are the leading supplier your competitive advantage you are the market leader something that is a position of prestige again showing that people are liking your products it also has significant export sales primarily to developed countries first and foremost because they said export meaning we become a multinational company we are a global company and hence your foreign exchange risks foreign transactions is a subject that comes into the picture which is directly part of your f2 syllabus also another thing that i see here is they're saying we primarily deal with developed countries only so developed countries i'm generally looking at north america europe that's what i'm looking at but in our industry analysis we were clear to see that majority of the growth is is going to come from developing nations that is the asia pacific region china you know other south american regions so why are we not looking at these as an expansion strategy we can really look at these areas to harness the full growth to get really good market growth a big opportunity for us to keep in mind and think about there are several major competitors in the controllers market as we learned in the industry analysis again there are competitors in the market their products are significantly cheaper than frinters but they are also much less sophisticated so you are charging higher prices premium pricing generally that's what we will relate to and that is part of your p2 syllabus pricing part of your p2 syllabus you should know the different pricing strategies which are available our strategy is not to compete on price but to offer innovative and stylish designs that is why people are choosing our products so focus here has to be on developing the brand and efficient production to maintain our high quality and innovativeness and sustain any turbulence in the market you are not competing on price somebody else reduces the price fine you stick to your offering because our products are innovative and sophisticated and we are westland's leading supplier so this is something that we need to keep in mind as our strategy our core values there is still demand for inexpensive controllers they do not have the smart features used in frinter's latest range there are some people who don't want a smart home who don't want the smart features so there is still demand for those kind of controllers so my thought is again i'm thinking can we not have a separate subset brand or a separate sub brand that sells these kind of controllers it can be possible right our premium brand sends what we are selling right now our major products we can have a separate subset of a brand that deals with inexpensive controllers but still maintaining the quality a product development strategy to keep in mind indeed there are lots of options which are available and there are still options to have mechanical controllers that are similar in design and construction to those that were made by frinter when it was founded in 1970s so still that outdated stuff is being sold and people are buying it frinter's heating and ventilation controllers are sold through 
building supply companies that resell them to heating engineers, plumbers and builders. So my selling line is not directly with the customer, with the end user. My sales channel is business to business right to right now. That's my focus. It's a B2B model because we are selling it to building supply companies and then they resell them to heating engineers, plumbers and builders who put them in your house. So this is my current supply chain. Extending my supply chain, developing my supply chain is something that we can look at over here. So majorly our selling channel is business to business, but Frinta will also accept bulk orders from large house builders. So you directly engage with house builders as well if they order 500 units or more at a time in order to equip each of the new houses on a major development. Let's say I'm making a development of 1000 houses. I can directly contact Frinta as a builder and they will give me their product. So that is also possible. I don't have to buy it from a building supply company. So if you're ordering more than 500, this is an option that Frinta is offering. Frinta's controllers must be installed by qualified professionals only. Quality is always key. An amateur installation could cause the controller to malfunction, thereby damaging our reputation. Errors can also cause gas and water leaks, which we don't want. Frinta will not, therefore, sell its controllers directly to the public or to retailers that supply the do-it-yourself market. Our product is not one which is categorized as do-it-yourself. You need a professional to fit it because we want to maintain our quality. So this is our current strategy and rightly so, we must protect the brand name. But again, can there be an opportunity for us to develop a line of products that are introduced in the do-it-yourself category? That's possible, right? This could be a completely new market segment for us. And with our brand name, we could gain market share with our history. Any market that we enter, we will be noticed. So this is Frinta's current sales channel. How can we develop our sales channels? We'll always have to keep thinking about the same. Next, Frinta markets its controllers heavily through advertising in trade magazines and online in various websites aimed at relevant tradespeople. So we are using and harnessing digital marketing. We are using a digital marketing in this modern world, which is very important part of your E2 syllabus. Always thinking about new and innovative marketing solutions has to be the key, something that we always keep in mind. The purpose of this advertising is to ensure that new products and new features are publicized and to maintain brand recognition. At the end of the day, brand development is key. Frinta does not advertise to the general public because homeowners rarely specify a particular brand when they are replacing or upgrading their current you know, material or their current product being used in the house. This I will say is a little bit contradictory because for example, let's say you have a Nest system in your house. Nest is a company that supplies controllers. If somebody comes to your house and like it, likes it, likes the system, you will definitely tell them or recommend the same system to them. They might go to their house and speak to their developer or their electrician or whatever and request for a Nest system because reviews are very good. So why is there or why is Frinta not looking to develop in this particular segment? I think it is something that can add value. I think that is something that has a flip side to it. So Frinta thinks that instead on relying on general public, they rely on contractors for recommendations that meet their needs. So they want to have good relationships with contractors. So contractors will be able to buy their products in bulk, Frinta's products in bulk, and then apply it to an entire housing society. That's what Frinta is currently thinking. But I do not see any harm in, you know, having a good general public appearance as well as a company. So that's an opportunity for us.
professionals are generally happy to recommend and use Frinta unless the customer wants a cheaper brand. So the controllers are a visible element of any heating and ventilation system. They're like a knob or a, just a small round LCD screen, which is visible. So people want it to be stylish and aesthetic. That is why Frinta is often chosen because our products are innovative, good to look at, and they do the job very well. So this is our competitive advantage. We have to stay true to this. Now, a very interesting part of this pre-scene, which is the smart speakers segment. In 2016, Frinta launched what was to be the first range of Frinta Friend smart speakers. We diversified our product range very much. It is something completely new and not what Frinta used to do. So company saw the synergies and opportunities and ventured into this market because this market in this modern world is really growing. So this shows that the company is ready to take risks and invest in growth opportunities. The company is ready to go for this. The attitude of the company is good in terms of new product development. So this line of products was launched in response to the success of the YP Vox smart speaker system produced by YP Burn in 2014. So this is a fictional competitor that they have created just for us to keep in mind. So Frinta saw that a competitor was doing well in this market. Why not come up with our own product and leverage our brand? So at the time of its launch in 2014, the YP Vox smart speaker was a new product category that combined various existing technologies that were intended to simplify users' lives. So the entire aspect of printers controllers was also to make life easy innovative products same printer tried to replicate when it came up with its speakers to make the user's life easy that was the major aim behind it now all of us have access to smart speakers you might have seen it somewhere heard of it so just try to imagine what the opportunities are in this real world they're pretty huge so the essence of a smart speaker can be summed up as follows. First, a smart speaker has online connection. So this is the element that makes the device smart. You know, you can connect it to a Wi-Fi and internet. Smart speakers act as hubs that make it quicker and easier for users to interact with compatible electronic equipment within the home. So another big, huge, big data opportunity to serve our customers better because as we know a smart speaker is something that is intuitive you can ask it questions and it will give you answers so you'll be able to understand what people's likings are dislikes are what they're using in a house what they're not using in a house so it's an entire synergy that you will develop between your major product line which is the components the controllers that you manufacture and the smart speakers which are newly introduced at the end of the day both of them are essential elements of a smart home right so a smart speaker first has online connection second a smart speaker has microphones because you want to give them verbal instructions all of that all of us know this third they are actually speakers as well so they take in the information and they'll give you the answer or if you ask it to play some music they'll play those musics some smart speakers have video touch screens as well that make your navigation easy so this page is just telling you about the characteristics or features a smart speaker has we already know most of these but we'll quickly go through them so a smart speaker also has artificial intelligence abilities which means if you ask it questions, it will give you very relevant answers. Like, will it rain tomorrow? What's the weather like tomorrow? Tell me what my calendar is for tomorrow because it's synchronized with your phone, right? So it has all of these artificial intelligence abilities. So you as a company, when you have launched a smart speaker, you would have known all of this. You would have taken account all of this. So you can see the technological advancement that our company has taken on board and again, opens up big data opportunities. 
the smart speaker will respond to any instruction that is prefaced by Frinta. You just need to tell, you know, tell the speaker, Frinta, what's the weather like? Frinta, will it rain? The software learns user preferences. So this is something that is key for a smart speaker. It learns what the user wants. For example, users can input names and passwords for major online retailers. Then if you just tell the speaker to buy something, it will automatically buy something. The money will be deducted and the product comes to your house. So that's the level of synchronization that we are speaking about. Next, scale. So users can connect as many smart speakers as they wish. So one speaker and another speaker from Frinta can be connected to give you better sound. Multiple smart speakers can be used as internal communication devices, enabling users to talk to one another or broadcast announcements across the house. Another feature which is available. Next, connectivity. Smart speaker systems can interact with other smart devices, even though those were not designed to be compatible with smart speaker systems. These smart devices generally use an open source operating system that is designed to control equipment. Any device that can be connected to the home network and operated with an app in theory can be controlled by a smart speaker, which means now think, how is this synergistic to your business? Your Frinta controllers are controlled by an app, right? So if they are controlled by an app, and you have a smart speaker which has an open source system so any device can control can connect to it so we have now a great opportunity to link my controllers and my smart speaker i can just tell my speaker to you know increase the temperature reduce the temperature and that should be doable so going into this market of making smart speakers is actually a very good investment if you look at the synergies side of the business. So for example, Dronco manufactures smart electrical plugs that can be switched on and off by a smartphone. This, if it, if, if it is using an app, it is connected to the smart speaker because it's an open source system so if you just tell your smart speaker to switch the light on switch the light off that will be possible so i already gave you the example of how frinta will be able to use their controllers and their smart speakers as a synergistic offering so while going through the pre-scene we are reading every part and seeing what the core of the business is what the actual thought of the business is so from all of this smart speaker information, we learn that in the future, we could develop a Frinta smart controller that is synchronized with the smart speaker. None of that information has been given to us up until now. So if anyone wanted to increase or decrease the temperature, they could simply do it by speaking to the smart speaker. Synergies are present. How we develop them and how we use them to our benefit has to be looked upon. So you can see the level of detail that we are going into when we are doing our analysis and every word is being gone through step by step. We do not miss anything. At every opportunity, we link it to E2, P2 and F2. And we also try to link it to real world scenarios that help us understand the business model or the business thoughts behind what the company has done. So that was part one of our pre-scene analysis. Part two and part three will be combined and presented to you in the next video. Make sure you're comfortable with part one, understanding the method that we are following in part one. You are, you've completely understood the points that I have made in part one and then you move on to the next step.